Hey everyone, welcome back into the Wells Tech Garage here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin for Wells Tech Connect episode number three. Before I get into answering uh, Marcus's question here from our last broadcast, I just want to talk a little bit about that broadcast. And uh, that broadcast was aired last week, Thursday, and it was on dual crank sensor diagnostics. And uh, we talked about our, our cam sensor also. Our vehicle is actually a case study for a bad cam sensor, so we showed how to diagnose and repair that cam sensor on there. And then we also talked about the uh, way the dual crank sensor system operates on those, those vehicles on the 3.4 engine, also similar on the 3.1 and the 3.8 engines. So why don't we get to Marcus's question. He asks, on his uh, 2000 Saturn L series with a 2.2 liter uh, four cylinder engine, he's got a crank no start. He's suspecting that he has a possible bad crank sensor but when he went to check power going to the sensor, he didn't have any. So he's wondering what's going on there. So Marcus, the answer to your question is, your Saturn uses a variable reluctance style sensor. Uh, much like the seven times sensor that was on the backside of our Grand Am, that uh, is only a two wire sensor. It doesn't have a power source supplied to it. Um, its function is really similar to an ABS wheel speed sensor and that kind of thing where you take a piece of ferrous metal, something that's magnetic, you know, steel or whatever, and you pass it past the magnet and it creates a magnetic field which creates electricity. Um, it'll create that AC voltage signal. So remember, any time that you have a magnetic object, a ferrous piece of metal, going past, moving, there's motion involved, past a magnet, you're going to create electricity. A magnetic field and that'll create the electricity. So uh, on your crank sensor being variable reluctance, that's exactly what's happening. Your crank is spinning, the, the, the wheel or tone ring is passing by that crank sensor and creating that magnetic field and creating that AC signal. So if you were just to turn your key on, you would not have any power down to that sensor. Um, you would actually be wanting to check that sensor by checking the AC voltage coming out of it during cranking or while it's running or by using a lab scope and actually monitoring that, that sine wave signal, just like on our seven times crank sensor. Um, if you have a Hall effect type sensor, like the 24 times crank sensor on our Grand Am or our uh, cam sensor on the Grand Am, those will be supplied with power, sometimes five, seven, eight, 12 volts, depending on what manufacturer you're diagnosing, but uh, those will have a, a power feed and a ground feed to them as well as a signal wire. So um, your car, variable reluctance, two wire sensor does not have its own supplied power. So great question. So uh, let's talk a little bit about lab scopes themselves. And we have our two lab scopes here. We have our little use scope here, our single channel scope that we got up from uh, our friends over at AES Wave. And uh, we got our Snap-on Varus here, our four channel scope and scanner. And now I'm not gonna sell you guys on any scopes or anything like that. That's all up to you guys to decide what kind of scopes you want and everything. Just do your research before buying. But I just want to talk about why we use each scope for, for what we use it for. And uh, you could probably talk to those guys at AES Wave and they'd be able to help you out with, with finding a scope for you as well. But anyways, our little one channel scope here is great for doing something like checking that, that uh, cam sensor signal on, uh, on our Grand Am last week. We could plug this thing in real quick, boot up time, you hook it right into that cam signal and you know right then and there if you're getting a signal out of it or not. You know, with this thing, you got to boot it up, you got to go into the scope options, and it just takes a little bit longer. And it, it still does the same thing. Remember, you're measuring voltage over time, just like a voltmeter does, except this actually is, is graphing it on a graph over time. But uh, this one does take longer to boot up. But if you're ever doing something like we're going to be doing in our next class where you want to show multiple signals coming in um, and then be able to compare them to one another, then you're going to want something like this where we have actually four channels on top of the scope. So uh, the different benefits and stuff, you know, every scope has a different um, readings that it'll, different speeds and that kind of thing. So just uh, make sure you look into that stuff when you're buying a scope, but they all do essentially the same thing. And uh, like I said, a, a scope is actually taking a voltage reading and it is graphing it over time where like your voltmeter would then take that voltage reading and it would kind of average it over time 
depending on, on what it's reading. So if you have a five volt square wave, your meter could actually read two and a half volts on that signal wire, depending on the frequency of the, uh, the sensor, um, where your lab scope would show zero to five and then back down to zero. So that's a case where you'd want to use a lab scope. Whenever you're measuring signals going into the PCM or coming out of a sensor, you want to use a scope for something like that so you can see it over time. Another good place to use a scope is say you're checking an intermittent issue with a power or ground or something like that. You hook up a scope to that power and you can see, sure, you have your, your 12 volts or 14 volts running. That's great. But now you could go through the harness and start wiggling and tapping on the harness as you go through, start shaking things around. And if you notice on the scope, if you get a drop or a spike or something in that, in that signal wire on there, in, that, uh, in the signal of the voltage reading, uh, then you would uh, know that when you shook that wire right there, that your problem lies in, in right there. So just another cool place to use a scope. And it's always great to get these things out and practice with them because um, we don't use our scope every day. Uh, you know, you don't use a scope to change brakes or, or anything like that. Only when you get really deep into diagnostics. And that makes it a little bit intimidating to get this thing out and, and have to get out the leads and hook everything up again. But the more often you use it, the more you'll want to use it and the more you'll fall in love with it just because of how great of a tool it is and how accurate you can be in your diagnosis. So why don't we go ahead and get into our next class. Now our next class is next week Thursday on May 5th at noon and it's going to be a continuation, uh, a part two of our first Discovering uh, Dual Crank Sensors class. In this class we're going to be mostly out on the vehicle testing with our scope. We're going to be showing the crank sensor seven times and 24 times. We're going to show our cam sensor again. And we're actually going to go ahead and show the three times, uh, three times signal that the ignition control module is actually creating. So we're going to show, we're going to show all those different signals uh, going out uh, onto the scope so that we can compare them all together and show you guys what to look for when you're, when you're doing this. Um, also, if you were on our last class, you heard that we're giving away one of our GoTech, our little, it's a little diagnostic dongle that you would plug into your OBD connector and you pull up an app on your smartphone or tablet to go ahead and read codes and it has possible fixes and repairs in there for you as well. We're giving one of those away during our next class is the drawing for it. So if you wanna still get entered in in the drawing, you still have time, go ahead and go to our uh, last class out on YouTube, the part one of uh, discovering uh, dual crank sensor and I'll, I'll include a link down in the description if you uh, want to watch that and either comment in the answer or go ahead and send me an email again here's my email right here send me out an email and I will get you entered into the drawing for the GoTech and now we're going to announce that next week Thursday May 5th we're going to do the actual drawing during the Eastern Time class so depending on where you are it'll be at the Eastern Time class and then we will announce who won during all four of our, our training classes during Eastern Central, Central Mountain and Pacific. But the actual drawing will occur during Eastern time. So we're gonna draw a winner at random out of a hat. So if you still wanna get entered in for that, make sure to uh, go ahead and answer the, uh, the question during the broadcast and either comment it into YouTube or uh, send me out an email. So that's gonna be next week, Thursday, May 5th at noon. So you guys make sure you're there and good luck winning the GoTech. We'll see you then. Thank you.